सो हेलो गाइस टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द स्कैपुला सो आई ऑलरेडी मेड अ वीडियो अबाउट द जनरल फीचर्स एंड अटैचमेंट्स ऑफ स्कैपुला इन पार्ट वन सो डोज हु हैव नॉट सीन इट प्लीज गो एंड वॉच इट एंड देन दिस वीडियो विल बी यूजफुल टुडे आई विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द ऑसिफिकेशन ऑफ स्कैपुला एंड सम क्लिनिकल एंड एक्टमी रिलेटेड टू इट ऑल्सो आई विल एक्सप्लेन यू हाउ द स्कैपुला इज होमोलोग टू द हिप बोन ओके Let's talk about the anatomical neck of the scapula. Now, in the margin of the glenoid cavity, I told you that there is an important fibrocartilaginous ring called the glenoid labrum. Okay, so it helps in increasing the depth of the glenoid cavity as well as helps in the articulation of the humerus. Okay, with the glenoid fossa. Now. the if we trace an imaginary line from starting from the supraglenoid tubercle and if we draw a continuous imaginary line from the supraglenoid tubercle till the infraglenoid tubercle and back to the supraglenoid tubercle this continuous imaginary ring like line will be called the anatomical neck of the scapula okay so this will be called as the anatomical neck of the scapula now similarly if uh, uh, this this region over here is called the suprascapular notch now starting from the suprascapular notch we start to trace an imaginary line from the suprascapular notch from here till the infraglenoid tubercle and then going from the spinoglenoid notch back to the suprascapular notch this continuous region okay so this line will be demarcating the surgical neck of the scapula now the surgical neck of the scapula is so called because that uh, this region is mostly vulnerable uh, to fracture okay compared to the anatomical neck so this uh, is referred to as the surgical neck of the scapula okay because the chances of fracture is more in that region compared to the anatomical neck all right now let's talk about the ossification of the scapula now the scapula ossifies from one primary center and seven secondary centers okay now the primary center appears near the glenoid cavity during the eight week of development okay in the intrauterine life see over here in this region this near the spinoglenoid notch okay in the dorsal aspect over here in this region the primary center during the eight week of intrauterine life okay it appears now the first secondary center appears in the middle of the coracoid process so this is the coracoid process over here now in the middle region okay now it appears in the first year okay and fuses by the 15th year okay now the first secondary center will appear in the middle of the okay in the horizontal part of the coracoid process now it will fuse by the 15th year now there is a sub coracoid center which will appear in the root of the coracoid process okay in the root of the coracoid process during the 10th year and will fuse by the 18th year so this is called the root of the coracoid process and the sub coracoid center will appear over here okay near the uh, scapular notch okay supra scapular notch so over here the sub coracoid center will appear and in the root of the coracoid process now it appears during the 10th year and fuses by the 16th to 18th years okay so remember this the primary center appears near the glenoid cavity okay near uh, over this region during the eight week of development and the first secondary center appears in the middle of the coracoid process okay and fuses by the 15th year and the sub coracoid center here it appears near the root of the coracoid pro coracoid process okay during the 10th year and fuses by the 16 to 18 years okay now let's talk about the other centers of the scapula now there are two centers for the acromion process in the superior surface okay 
Now there are two uh, two centers for the acrimen process. Now there is one center for the lower two third of the margin of the glenoid cavity. Okay, the lower two third. Next, there will be a center for the medial border over here, and similarly there will be one more center for the inferior angle over here. Okay. So two for the acrimen process, one for the two third in the lower border of the glenoid cavity, one for the medial border, and one for the inferior angle. So there will be the other centers. They will appear at puberty. All these centers and fused by the twenty fifth year. Now the fact of practical importance is concerned with the acrimen process. Now if these two centers fail to fuse, okay. Now, if these two centers fail to fuse and unite, it may be interpreted as a fracture on radiological examination. Okay, so it will be interpreted as a fracture on radiological examination. In such cases, a radiograph of the opposite scapula as well. Okay, a radiograph of the opposite acromion process scapula in the scapula will mostly reveal similar failure of union. Okay, now if we take the other scapula, in that case, the radiological examination will reveal that there is similar failure of union in the acromion process of the other scapula as well. So these are pretty much important. Now I will be showing you through a diagram the centers I discussed just now, so that you get a visual picture of the region so that the centers usually appear. And fuse okay. So in this diagram over here, you can see that there is one primary center of the scapula, okay, in near the glenoid cavity. So it appears during the eighth week of intrauterine life. All right. Now there are others seven secondary centers, as I told you, in the whole of the scapula. See, one center. Will be there in the superior. I mean, in the superior surface of this coracoid process, way in its horizontal part. So it will appear in the first year, and it will be fused by the fifteenth year. Okay. Now there are there is a subcoracoid center. Okay, near the suprascapular notch. Now it will appear during the tenth year and fused by the sixteenth to eighteenth years. Now let's discuss about the other centers. See, there are two for primary, uh, two secondary centers for the acromion process, and one secondary center for the lower two third of the glenoid cavity. Okay. Now its appearance is also at puberty and fuses, and it fuses by the twenty fifth year. Now similarly, for the medial border, we'll have one center. It will appear at puberty and fuse by the twenty fifth year. Similarly, there will be a secondary center for the inferior angle. It will appear at puberty and fuse by the twenty-fifth year. So this is an important area for the ossification of the scapula. So these are pretty much important, and you have to learn it well so that during examinations you can write well. Okay. Now. There is one important topic in the clinical anatomy of the scapula. Okay, now I told you that in the medial border, in the costal surface, we'll have the attachment of the serratus anterior. Okay, now its first digitation is from the superior angle till the root of the spine. Okay, the second and third in the medial border. All right, and in the inferior angle, there will be five digitations. Okay, the second and third in the medial border and in the In fair angle, there will be five digitations. All right. Now, if there is the paralysis of the serratus anterior, okay. Now, if there will be the paralysis of the serratus anterior, it will cause the winging of the scapula. Now, in that case, in the winging of the scapula, the medial border of the bone becomes unduly prominent. Okay. Now, it will become unduly prominent in your back. Okay. And the arm cannot be abducted beyond. 90 degree and you will not be able to abduct your arm beyond 90 degree now there is also one 
dislocation referred to as the scaphoid scapula okay now it's actually an abnormality not a dislocation now in scaphoid scapula what happens is now it is actually a developmental anomaly okay now in which the medial border is concave in shape okay now the medial border is concave in shape in the scaphoid scapula so it is a developmental anomaly okay now let us discuss an important fact about the scapula now the scapula bone of the humans it is homologous to their hip bone okay now the hip bone is generally formed by the fusion of three bones so this is the ilium this is the ischium this is the pubis ilium ischium pubis see this is the ramus of the ischium this is the superior ramus of pubis this is the ischial spine these are some points which i need to highlight see this is the pubis this is the ilium okay now the scapula i mean the body of the scapula okay the body of the scapula is generally homologous to the ilium okay now it is homologous to the ilium of the hip bone now similarly the coracoid process okay the coracoid process except the tip which is the pre coracoid element okay the coracoid process except the tip and the one third of the glenoid cavity now this portion is homologous to the ischium okay so this portion is homologous to the ischium now the tip of the coracoid process okay of the pre coracoid element this portion is homologous to the pubis all right so this was an important homology between the scapula and the hip bone now there is an important i mean an interesting fact about the scapula in reptiles as well that in reptiles what happens is the scapula is present as a separate bone okay now the scapula is present as a separate bone so that is generally referred to as atavistic epiphysis okay now that is actually a phenomenon of atavistic epiphysis all right so i hope you understand the homology between the hip bone and the scapula okay so so this was all about today until next time okay keep watching